Welcome to another edition of Chargers Unleashed. Jay Kepner and Dale Wolkenstein here with you from the LA Football Network. This is your first time tuning in the show. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. And if you are tuning in from ESPN, thank you so much for joining us. Dan Wolkenstein training camp, as we said yesterday, has officially kicked off. We're now in the thick of things. Week one of training camp down in El Segundo, down at the Bolt. Chargers fans are showing out. Much anticipation for this upcoming Chargers season, and we're going to dig into everything that is day two. Dan Wolkenstein, how are you, sir? I'm great. I'm excited. It's finally Friday. It's the weekend, fast approaching. Uh, we will be out there. LAFB will be representing the uh, Chargers fans and Chargers faithful out at camp today and tomorrow. So look forward to seeing all of you. Please say hi. Don't be a stranger. Uh, you said it, Jake. Day one in the books. Day two also in the books. Heard a lot from Greg Roman. You heard from J.K. Dobbins and Rashawn Slater. We saw receivers and explosive plays happening. Uh, DBs still making DB plays, which you like to see. Uh, of all of that and more we'll discuss on today's episode. But, Jake, before we get to that, let's pay the bills. Talk about our friends. I want to remind everybody that Bet Online remains your number one source for all of your sports betting needs this season from baseball, golf, soccer, right up to the top fights of UFC, MMA, and boxing. Every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. When the game is over, head on over to the online casino and get in on the game of blackjack, poker, or unwind with one of our. 150 slot games that we have available head on over to the website today that's betonline.ag to get in on the action just make sure to use that promo code believe that's b-l-e-a-v for your 50 percent free bet credit on your first deposit for up to 250 dollars bet online the game starts here so i think we've all heard this at nauseum and everyone's so excited about camp being back oh, but yes. there's just something different about when the pads come on. And you heard a lot of people talk about that's when we're going to really start to see some of the changes and physicality and maybe some of the offensive line and defensive line, the trench warfare, so to speak. But that being said, you're still able to glean a lot from these camp uh, sessions. And you're starting to see a few key pillars of this offense and defense start to kind of prevail. One, you heard a lot of people talk about the identity being established and the importance of the run game and balancing. And Greg Roman talked about that in the press conference, which we'll talk about in a second, but they still got Justin Herbert as their quarterback. And if you don't know, now, you know, this entire staff loves and understands what they have. And the dude at the helm in the gold Jersey, the dude, Justin Herbert was Slinging it was throwing dimes all over the place, according to Daniel Popper and according to Eric Smith and folks on the ground. Uh, I believe he at one point completed eight of nine uh, in his first passes. It opened 11 11 drills. Uh, he saw explosive plays to Luke Benson, the tight end, DJ Chark, Josh Palmer, Lad McConkey getting plays, uh, Quentin Johnston also making catches. So I, I think the, the lead here for me is J.K. Dobbins even talked about it, him being utilized as a pass catcher. This passing game, people talk about, it's all it's a Greg Roman offense, they're only going to run. Jake, I don't think so. No. I really don't think so. No. I mean, I'm, I'm in in terms of where you'd like to start in general. This 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 whole day again. We you know we talked a lot about day one being mainly defensive focus. That's a trend that usually happens on day one of camp. Defense usually wins those type of days. Even the offense didn't have that bad of a day on day one, but day two for Justin Herbert in this offense, I felt like it really clicked. Just eight and nine, as you mentioned, explosive plays. There was a twenty yard pass to Hayden Hurst that was in there. And I really liked if you combine some of the comments from Greg Roman and J.K. Dobbins when they were talking about, as you mentioned, J.K. getting involved in the passing game. That was a lot of what he did at Ohio State. That was a lot of what he did at Baltimore. And then Greg Roman says, when people were asking him, you know, is there any depth chart or any particular order that they foresee as it stands right now for this running back room? And it's like, no, there's not really a pecking order right now, how it stands. We've, it's, it's a... 
running back stable that's been heavily scrutinized for this Chargers team over these last several years because there's just been a lack of options outside of an RB1. Now, essentially, you have a stable of guys, whether they're veterans, rookies, or players that haven't even given a fair shake at an opportunity. Every single one of them fits this scheme that Greg Roman wants to run. And I don't think that Greg Roman is biased towards any way to one player or gives a crap as far as what the name is on who's in the backfield. He's just ready to implement a lot of these running plays. And I, and as you mentioned, what JK was talking about, he was even mentioning the whole idea of, Oh, Greg's just going to run the ball, this, that, and the other. No, even Greg said, he's like, Greg said that whole notion is a long time ago. He said, we're going to basically adapt on a week in and week in week out basis. It's all going to be situational based on what the opposing team has given us. So you have to be excited about this for those that are still furious and worried that Justin Herbert is just going to become a game manager. First of all, did you see Justin Herbert yesterday at practice? It's body by Ben Herbert. You think that they're going to let that howitzer go to waste the way that it looks right now? No, sir. So this idea of it being just a one dimensional offense. Don't believe it. I think the chargers are going to have a lot to be that are going to surprise a lot of people during the regular season. Yeah, and, and we'll get to to more of the the balance and the the bully ball and the medieval type of play style when we get to the press conference uh, takeaways here in a second. Uh, but you, you mentioned it, defense still shining as well. Christian Fulton, Asante Samuel Jr., and Tarheed still all coming up with PBUs on day two. That's according to Daniel Popper, uh, who was there, obviously. Uh, by the way, Jake, I don't know if you caught the press conference with J.K. Dobbins and Daniel Popper. <laughs> yes, I, yes, I did. That was so good. That was so good. I think if anybody wants to make me feel good when I'm standing next to somebody who's really ripped, I want someone to tell me, you're, you're not slouchy. You're not sloppy. <laughs> it's it's great because all, all I saw was the tweet from Daniel Popper basically saying, I just got into a conversation with J.K. Dobbins that I had no idea it was going to go that way without knowing the context of what actually happened. And then you listen to the press conference and it's absolutely hilarious. Oh, going from going from trying to backpedal the comparisons of physique, then to talking about the patchy beards, and yeah, it just like, continues to go downhill. Like, 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 you know, you're awesome. like, about me. It's like, okay, okay, so you got a beard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good, Dan it's the so man. <laughs> yeah, Dan the man. I, that, I felt that. I felt that. Uh, Jake, anything else in terms of like takeaways on the field before we get to some of the press conference takeaways? You know, I think we'll kind of glean light into that. Yeah, it seemed like there was a lot of, uh, much like it was for day one, as Daniel Popper was reporting, a lot of rotation between the corners. And this should surprise absolutely nobody if you were listening to Steve Klinkscale's press conferences from months ago in terms of wanting to get these guys versatile, familiar with all spots. So you know, obviously there was a heavy rotation with AJ Finley, JT Woods, Tony Jefferson, second team defense. Uh, it was Cam Hart on the outside with Tarheep still in the slot and Dean Leonard again on the outside. So Derwin James has talked about this. Alohi Gilman has talked about this. We've heard Steve Klingscale talked about this. They are going to want to try to get these DBs, whether it's corner or safety, as familiar with either position as much as they can by the time that the regular season takes place. And already, Dan, we're seeing that implemented in force. And you got to love it because it makes players versatile. It makes them familiar with what's going on in the defensive scheme for a position that's not necessarily one that they play. And the last one is that dreaded I word that we never want to use. But when that situation comes up, Trevor McHugh was talking about it. Same situations happened with them in Michigan. Mike Sandriskill. Mike Sanders still had to play on the outside because they suffered an injury at an outside corner. So he had to go from the slot and go play outside, and he did a pretty damn good job doing it. So getting your guys prepared for any type of situation, especially when it comes to the way that this secondary has suffered over the last couple of years, you love to see it. Yeah, and everybody talks about the the pads coming on, the importance it has on the trenches. I think that's going to be huge for the DBs and some of the camp battles going on. Uh, specifically that slot corner position with Jazeer Taylor and Tarheep still. And right now it seems Jazeer Taylor got it on lock. Uh, I think this might change once pads come on. 
Andy on the outside too. When you're looking at Cam Hart and Christian Fulton, it's not Samuel Jr. Pads on as a cornerback, being able to actually go up and contest catches and things. A different beast. So very much looking forward to that. Obviously, you're looking forward to the you know Joe Alt versus you know Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack and Bud Dupree and Tuli. I Yes, but there's a lot to glean uh, with the pads on on the position skill players as well. Uh, Jake, Greg Roman, J.K. Dobbins, Rashawn Slater, all at the podium yesterday. And there's something about Greg Roman. We'll get to J.K. Dobbins here in a second, but there's something about Greg Roman where he is unapologetic in his invitation for the medieval type of game. And yes. that mindset, anytime I hear that, that seems like it is a clear shot at this is who we are. This is the type of team we need to be. This is the level of physicality that is required. This is how nasty this team needs to get to. Hearing him talk about the the percentages of, you know, when they're going to pass versus run. And because he was asked about, you know, is it going to be a run heavy scheme? And he said, you know, every game is different. Some games are going to be that medieval style. Some games are going to throw it 50 times and some they'll be more balanced. It really is just a week to week matchup to your point, Jake. But the the bully ball, as J.K. Dobbins talked about, and that medieval style of play where it's just man on man who can impose their will. That is what this Chargers team has lost the battle of for years. For years. And we've heard a lot of talk about it, but when it came to Sundays and Thursdays and Mondays, they lost those more than they've won. And then you flip the page to a Greg Roman offense and a Jim Harbaugh offense or team over the years that's where they win. And you're seeing so many different things that are implemented by the staff to help emulate that, you know, the fourth quarter stuff, the, the bear crawls and the push-ups, and all of the workouts and stuff they do afterwards. That's building up stamina and physicality and strength and endurance and a mindset to, to, to lean in to the tough times. And when other teams forfeit, wave the white flag, they're there to take it. And I think that medieval mindset is something that is so ref refreshing covering this team because they have been sorely missing it for years. It, it is amazing from the standpoint of when you look at the last time that the Chargers really had a dominant running game and one that you can lean on that it's 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 been nearly 20 years since that's it's taken boring. place. And you could say the running backs that have come since then, the Ryan Matthews, the Melvin Gordons, the Austin Ecklers, and all the other secondary running backs that were mixed in with those groups, whether it was them as a talent or the, them in a particular type of scheme, it never actually matched up to that. And then when you go back and you look at during that time frame in terms of teams that won playoff games or teams that won Super Bowls, you know, Tom Brady – for a number of his different, uh, you know, number of Super Bowls that he won, he had great running games. Yep. Ben Roethlisberger, when he won his Super Bowls, he had great running games. They had some help. Kansas City, while they don't necessarily need a great running game because they have Patrick Mahomes, but when you can make a defense have to worry about a guy like Isaiah Pacheco because his running style is so unique, and when you could start leaning on that late in the game, that's going to win you games. And it feels like to me from everything as this excerpt from Greg Roman and what we've heard of from Jesse Minter previously that when was the last time that you could say from a Chargers standpoint that you could lean on a defense late in the game because you have a 10-point lead or a two-touchdown lead and not have to worry about it and not have to have those dreaded last two or three minutes of the game that we all watching this team have to worry about on Sundays and have to take a – breath of air, whether it's a win or throw ourselves in defeat over a last minute loss. So or lean or lean on a running game. Yes. Suppose. Literally, what is the last time, Jake, you Chargers fans, we have felt confident about a Chargers offense being able to run out the clock. You know, it's funny. Feeling confident is different because that obviously takes a trend. 
the last two times that you felt like oh there was going to be like a change in the guard that they were actually going to get this running game going strangely enough both of them were the first games of the season this previous <laughs> season against Miami when all of a sudden the Chargers just went ballistic in a loss but ran over 200 yards against the Miami Dolphins and then was never heard from ever again and then I believe it was I can't remember if it was Anthony, I don't think, it, yeah, maybe it was Brandon Staley's first year. I think the, it was the game against Washington where it was that last seven minutes of the game. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. they never gave the ball back because the running game was doing so well. But again, it never week turned into, week two, I think, right? It never ended up being a trend. It was just, no. it was a one off where you saw it. You weren't able to find that type of magic in the run game consistently. That's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, a couple of things. So from Greg Roman, he talked about, you know, the the blend of run and pass and kind of marrying the two together. Uh, he talked about the excitement of the wide receiver room and the, the excitement from the group of the work ahead of them, as well as kind of the competition in that room, which I think will bring out the best to each other. Uh, he sees the running back room as a really strong room. And I thought this was interesting, Jake. I think it's clear the top two, J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards, those are the two leaders of that group. The position battle for RB3 and 4, that's going to be where the battle starts. But he did call out Isaiah Spiller specifically when talking about that room. So it seems as though maybe Isaiah Spiller right now is RB3. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I, I think... The one piece that this Chargers team has been, there's been a lot of pieces, but the, a, a piece that this Chargers team has been kind of lacking is production, both from a blocking and a reception perspective of the tight ends. And Greg Roman was asked about the importance of the tight ends and he called on it. He said that, you know, they put a lot on their tight ends. They're going to be moving all over the place and they have a bunch of different responsibilities, but also noted that they have arguably the best blocking tight end in the NFL that they have, that's in Will Disley. And they have a Hayden Hurst who is incredible pass catcher, who's also a pretty good blocker as well. Noted Donald Parham needs to get more involved in the run game. But the tight end group, I think, is going to be something that's going to be a strength of this team. But, uh, you know, I, I think overall, there were no surprises from Greg Roman. Like I said, he's unapologetic with the way that he portrays himself and what the goals are of his offenses. And that's refreshing because... We've wanted to know what the identity is of this team and of this offense for years. We know what it's supposed to be now. Speaking of refreshing, didn't he also mention the possibility of Jordan McFadden going in as a tight end? For those that don't know, Jordan McFadden, I'm not sure what the updated weight is, but if you look on the Chargers website, it lists him at 303 pounds. And we know from yesterday's practice or on day one's practice they were using him in familiar sets as they did last year where they put him in at fullback occasionally. And now Greg Roman's talking about him possibly coming in at tight end. I love this idea of utilizing Jordan McFadden as just an ultimate weapon. It kind of reminds me a little bit of how they used Steven Anderson, where Steven Anderson was essentially an H-back, a tight end, a fullback. But Jordan McFadden's just a different beast. He's over 300 pounds. He should be an offensive lineman contending for guard, but can also play center. But now you're going to use him at fullback and tight end? Sure. Give me that jumbo package and goal line with Jordan McFadden leading the way. I love it. Yeah, we, we talked about how exciting that would be of having the, you know, the five offensive linemen, plus you had Will Disley at blocking, plus you had him. I mean, come on, McFadden, that group, that seven blocking would be nuts. Give Ben yes. Mason as a fullback. Let's go. Like, let's just make this thing work. Um, Rashawn Slater, J.K. Dobbins, both the podium. Rashawn Slater didn't really say much, to be honest. There wasn't really many things there other than his excitement for the pads to come on and his excitement for this team establishing its identity of physicality and can't wait to kind of see that come to fruition. J.K. Dobbins, if you don't know, he is such personality. He is so fun, always positive, and the mindset is just so good. And he understands kind of the, the uphill battle he's had with injuries, but he is so over it. And it seems as though he is speaking it into existence that he's going to have a healthy, productive 2024 season. And as much so that if he's healthy, he sees himself as a top running back in the entire NFL and wants to go back to that bully ball and thinks that he would be a massive part of it, which I can't disagree. What a way to start off your press conference by saying, I, if you don't see a smile on my face, I'm either injured or I'm dead. <laughs> It's just like, 
whoa, okay. It's just like, and you can see his jubilation and his happiness for the fact that he's here and he's with this team and how much he wants to help them win. You know, talking about, I want to help Justin Herbert win. I want to help Derwin James win. I want to help my fellow Buckeye and Joey Bosa win. He just seems like the ultimate consummate team player. And for the fact that, again, we talked about how Trevor McHugh mentioned, you know, Jim Harbaugh loves getting his hands on guys that actually beat him at the college level. And we talked about Quentin Johnston doing that. J.K. Dobbins put up a game once upon a time in Ohio State against Michigan. So I'm sure that Jim Harbaugh took note of that on top of the familiarity in the offense. But J.K. just... JK just has, I think, a great mindset for where he is health-wise, what he wants to do, what he wants to accomplish. I don't think that he's looking at all. He doesn't care if he's if he's running RB1 or RB2 or RB6. I think he just wants to be part of a group that is ultimately going to end up winning. We know where he's probably going to be in the pecking order as it relates to this group because he's definitely one of the veterans. He's on the younger side of 25 years old. A lot of explosion for what he can bring to the team. So you feel really excited about not only what his message was, but just his addition to this team. Yes. For those of you on ESPN radio tuning in, you can catch the full episode over on our YouTube, anywhere you find your podcasts. Uh, Let's continue, Jake. I think, um, you know, JK Dobbins brought a lot and he talked about, you know, this team wanting to have an identity of a bully. And he said, like Jim Harbaugh would say a healthy bully uh, with both a run and a pass game and being able to do whatever they want, whenever they want, both as a player individually as well as a team. But also acknowledge, you know, you can talk all you want, but it starts with action. And the the admiration, I would say, uh, he has for this coaching staff, for the Harbaugh's, for Coach Roman, you know, says he's a genius and acknowledge that the passing game will be there. Uh, it's nice to see a confident J.K. Dobbins and a healthy J.K. Dobbins. He says this is the healthiest he's ever felt. He feels like he's in college right now. Uh, He said he doesn't really feel anything, and he feels even faster than he was before the injury. Um, And the part was, you know, this is a a chest bump, if you will, where he asked, hey, I don't know the number, but what's my yards per carry? He asked the press pool, and someone said 5.8, and he basically was like, I don't know any people that do that. And, uh, He just said that he feels that everything seems slower. He got a chance. He had the opportunity to miss the whole year. And so that gave him an opportunity to study the game and things seem to have slowed down for him. Uh, And also acknowledges the future hall of fame quarterback. He has at the helm calling him a dude for Justin Herbert. And again, must, must be nice going from Lamar Jackson to Justin Herbert as a two quarterbacks you've been playing with. Like, Dang, a healthy J.K. Dobbins, Jake, transforms this offense from a year ago. There's a lot of things that transforms this offense, but literally the Chargers have not seen a dynamic running back like J.K. Dobbins since LT. You could put in Ryan Matthews there. You could put in Melvin Gordon. You could put in Austin Eckler, put in Michael Turner, all of those names. None of them are as dynamic and explosive as the J.K. Dobbins is. Can we get that J.K. Dobbins for a season? Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Anything else from J.K. Dobbins or from the rest of the group or from day two before we move on to day three and day four and week two and week three and preseason and all that stuff? Uh, Jim Harbaugh, once again, just having a great moment on field. You know, yesterday or day one talking about uh, he's like, he's stepping on the foot with cleats. You know, he's, he's, he's all there. And then his whole quote about, you know, it's day one. It's like being born. It's coming out of the womb. And then day two, no big deal. He's just out there with the rest of the guys pulling sleds with offensive or defensive linemen standing on top of them. So showing everybody else, Hey, I could still do the work. Even with you youngins out here, I could still be pulling sleds. It was awesome. Yeah. That's our coach. That's our coach. I, Look, uh, there's so many things that are different. But to your point, Jake, what is not different and it has not changed a bit is Jim Harbaugh and the Jim Harbaugh way. And it's fun to see kind of this come to life and to see where it heads. Again, embrace the journey covering this team, being a fan of this team. It, it's it's fun. 
Like this is this is a fun time to be around this team. And I am so excited for the fun happening this weekend. We got uh fun events happening at Rock and Brew on Saturday. Jake, you and I will be there. That's gonna be uh, fun. Possibly a live show from there oh. on site with I think there's I think I heard Jake, there's already like close to 200 RSVPs for that event. Oh. <laughs> oh, <geez>. So okay. <laughs> so um yeah. And then Dearly we'll also inebriated. Be there. We will also be <laughs> there uh, throughout the weekend uh, covering the team. So be on the lookout for more news and notes from us. Jake, anything else you want to discuss before we head out of here for the weekend? Dan, you're heading down to training camp this afternoon. So I'm sure that we will be keeping an eye on what you're seeing from everybody out there on the field. So definitely make sure that you're following down Dale Wolkenstein on Twitter later this afternoon as he will be updating all of us as it relates to the latest news from Chargers training camp. Yes, uh, but until then, happy weekend. Enjoy the festivities. Enjoy training camp. For everyone going out there, be safe. Have fun. Stay cool. Uh, for Jake Hefner, I'm Dan Wolkenstein. This is LAC underscore Unleashed on X. Uh, Chargers Unleashed. We'll talk to you guys soon on the next Chargers Unleashed.